the real number system. In this video, you will learn to classify real numbers. Much of this should be a review for you, but we want to make sure that you understand the words to describe different types of real numbers. We will go over real numbers that include rational and irrational numbers, and within the rational numbers we have integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. Remember to write the notes down, including the examples, and to make note of any questions you still have. The notes page should be in your notes section. And if at any point the video is going too quickly, remember that you can pause the video to write down what's on the screen, or you can even replay parts of the video. We'll start from the inside out. We'll talk about natural numbers first. Natural numbers are your counting numbers. Those are 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And that keeps going. Those are the first numbers you learn as a child. Next we have whole numbers. Whole numbers are all of the counting numbers and 0. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Next we have integers. Integers include counting numbers, their opposites, and 0. Recall that opposites are like negative 4 and positive 4. They're the same distance from 0, but one is negative and one is positive. So when we talk about integers, we're including negative a million, negative 100, negative 17, and all of the positives. We have negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way into the thousands and millions and billions. All of the numbers that we've talked about so far have been subsets of rational numbers. This means that they're included in rational numbers. Rational numbers, represented by the letter Q, are any numbers that can be written as a fraction. The numbers that we've talked about, the integers, the whole numbers, and the natural numbers, are all over the denominator 1. So 3 is the same thing as 3 over 1, and negative 3 is the same thing as negative 3 over 1. So everything we've talked about so far has been a rational number. Rational numbers include repeating decimals and decimals that terminate. What this means is if we have the number 0.6 repeating, since that could actually be written as the fraction 2 thirds, it is, in fact, a rational number. Any repeating decimal and any number that terminates or ends eventually, even if it's a long decimal with many digits, are still rational numbers. I'm going to write a few more examples of rational numbers for you. I wrote them over here on the left. We have 0.729, which is 729 thousandths, and therefore we could write it over a thousand. Any decimal that ends like this will be a rational number. We have negative five-sevenths, which if you did out on a calculator, it would be 0.714285714285714285, but again that repeats, and we know right here that it can be written as a fraction. Negative 1.6 and 1 and 3 eighths. Those are all rational numbers. Now a final thought about rational numbers. When we say it can be written as a fraction, we mean a fraction where the denominator is not zero. This brings us to irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are real numbers that are not rational. In other words, they cannot be written as a fraction where the denominator is not zero. And in the decimal form, the decimal does not terminate or end, and it does not repeat. Some examples include the square root of two, the square root of 5, the infamous pi, which we know goes on forever and ever and ever, and you can try to memorize as many digits as you'd like. The square root of any number that's not a perfect square will be an irrational number. So all of these rational numbers and irrational numbers make up the set of real numbers, which is the focus of what we use in everyday life and so far in all of your math classes. Notice that a lot of numbers fall into multiple categories. For example, all of the whole numbers are also integers, and they're also rational numbers, and they're also real numbers. So anything that's inside of another bubble is included in that. Now that we have all these classifications, we should be able to take any number that we're given and to list the categories that it falls into. For example, negative 17. Think about which categories that falls into. And do the same for the next two. 
Pause the video to test yourself, and then I'll write the answers. Negative 17 is an integer, it's rational, and it's real. The square root of 40 is, is irrational, don't let this I confuse you, and real. And 9 fourths is rational and real. Congratulations on finishing your first video homework assignment. Remember to come in with your notes completed and with any questions that you still have. If you're curious why I call them real numbers and you want to know what an imaginary number is, keep watching for about 45 more seconds. And if you want a little sneak peek of what it means to be an imaginary number or not real, think about this. The square root of 9 we know is 3 because 3 times 3 equals 9. But what about the square root of negative 9? We know that 3 times 3 equals 9, and negative 3 times negative 3 also equals 9. So therefore, we can never have a number times itself that equals negative 9. So there isn't a square root of negative 9 in our real numbers, and we actually write it instead as 3i. That's an imaginary number. You don't have to worry about it for now.